Matt West, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today, man. I'm truly excited to have you here. I know we've had uh, a bit of a journey to get here, but I'm excited we finally made it, man. And just thank you so much for being here. No, absolutely. And I appreciate you having this space to uh, share stories that are very impactful. Yeah, man. Well, thank you. Thank you for being part of it. It doesn't happen unless people like yourself show up and are willing to, you know, just be like raw, real and share your story. So um, let's start off. How about Matt with, can you just kind of give the audience a little bit of an inside look as far as like, what did life look like for little Matt West? As you were a kid, you're growing <laughs> up. What, what was life for little Matt like? Little Matt, man. I mean, if we want to go all the way back to like elementary school, I was raised in a city called Palmdale. It's about 30 minutes away from yeah, LA. Yeah, yeah. I know Palmdale. So I was raised out there from, I, we moved out there from the Valley cause I was actually born in Northridge. So I was born and raised in the Valley, but we moved relocated to Palmdale in around like sixth grade. So I would say that's kind of where I was uh, raised and I had a typical upbringing. I had both my, I was blessed with having both my parents. They instill a lot of values regarding nice. my education, things like that. So I had that. I still have friends that I'm really, t like really close with that. Um, I grew up, we played soccer, we played uh, baseball together. We did yeah. Boy Scouts. So we did all that. Nice. And all those experiences like really kind of fostered my, look on life my perspective on life as it relates to my values my beliefs and things like that and then kind of fast forward to high school I was super passionate about soccer like I loved soccer mm. I played it since I was five I had aspirations of going on and becoming a professional soccer player and it was during my 11th grade year that I had this like really sharp pain in my knee and I, and I'm pretty tolerant of pain. Like I can tolerate a lot of pain, yeah. but this was like excruciating. Like I, I couldn't even sleep. And I went to the doctor, the doctor said, look, you're not going to be able to play for the remainder of this season. And that was devastating because yeah, I had my, my sights set on playing on the varsity team, getting some exposure and really building my, my brand per se. Right. And, yeah. and being able to be in a position where I can get a scholarship and pursue my, my passion. And it was really tough. Like, honestly, like that was like a difficult period of time. I couldn't sleep. I had a lot of anxiety and my teacher pulled me in and I happened to be taking a psychology class and he pulled me in and he started teaching me the principles of psychology. And he really kind of showed me something that I started to apply to my own life. So I started to apply yeah. the, the aspects of neuroscience, CBT, and all these things that I was studying. And I saw that there was a drastic change in the way I think with the way I felt and the way huh. I was doing things in the world. And I always had this curiosity about me of wanting to know like why people do what they do. Yeah. And that was the moment where when I was introduced to these principles of psychology, I discovered a new passion and it replaced my passion for soccer. And I really delved deep into it. I studied it. I, I was learning about it. And this was, all the way through high school into college, end up obtaining two masters in psychology, one from Pepperdine University. And okay. I was like, locked in, like I had this, this passion of mine and I always was like going after right. it. But along the way, even though I was like aligned with, with my passion in psychology, there was always something missing. Like there was this thing that was missing and my entrepreneurial spark really started when I, after I graduated from Pepperdine, I moved in with my, my ex-wife and we moved to Marina Del Rey and we were there for six years. And there was like an influx of startups that were coming into Venice at the time. Huh. And one of the companies that really kind of sparked my entrepreneurial spirit was 
a company called Dollar Shave Club. So <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, I, I saw the, the video and I was like, okay, what can I think of in terms of a business model that can be very similar in terms of the subscription? And I thought of a company called Scrub Scriptions, where it was a monthly hmm. delivery service of scrubs to nurses. And they would get like some kind of care package. So there was a still the, the essence of trying to help other people in that business. But I didn't yeah. know anything about business. And it wasn't something I was super passionate about. I had no knowledge about nurses. So it kind of just plateaued. But that, right. that so hunger inside of me was still like was still in there. And um, fast forward, right. we, moved, we moved to um, Orange County. We lived in Irvine. We had right. our daughter. So we just wanted to root ourselves in that area because it's, it's a great place. As you know, Orange County is a great place to raise kids. So right. we were in Irvine. I was, I was working as a psychologist, still practicing. Fast forward to 2008. After five years, my wife and I decided that we were going to go our separate ways. Right. And... So Matt, let's let's jump back for a quick second because there's like a massive bunch amount of, I think, a bunch to, of layer, I know. <laughs> a lot of layers. So like yeah. I think one thing that's first and foremost just so beautiful that you did it at such a young age is like you have this passion, this thing you're so committed to soccer. And I think sometimes this happens in life is we have something that we're so committed to. We're like, I have an idea of what I want to do with my life. I'm pursuing it, it's what I want to do. And then we hit the the unforeseen speed bump right, right and then it's right. a matter of like oh shit what the heck am i gonna do here am you know and i think the beautiful thing that i see that you did in that moment that i think could be such a lesson for so many people is like if there's a speed bump it really is an opportunity to take a look and say is this really what i want to continue to do or is there something else that's kind of been festering inside of me because it's like even though you couldn't play that year it's fair to say that you could have gone back, you could have done more soccer, you could have you could have pursued that path, but you allowed yourself to explore different options, which led to, you know, obviously a, a lot of different things that you did. And so I'm curious, like you jump forward, you go get two different masters in psychology, right? That's like not not just like let me go to school and get a major in psych <laughs> because I think it's interesting. It's like I'm gonna get two masters, like I'm gonna eat, breathe, and sleep this for many years. Um, I'm curious for you, after you had gotten those two masters, did you have like a plan, an idea of like, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go do this? Or was it, or was the plan like kind of the traditional saying we always hear, which is like, go to school, get good grades, go to college, get a better grade and get a high paying job. Like, like before we started recording, you and I were talking about that. Like nobody gives you that GPS of like, Here's, here's how you like figure out your life and get to where you want to be. So if we jump back into your life, when you were in that phase of, you know, I got my two masters now in psychology, I really enjoy this kind of take us into like, what was your plan there? No, absolutely. And it was a, to answer your question, it was a mixture of both. So like I mentioned earlier, my family really instilled the value of education, go on, get a degree, good, good, great. So I always had that in me, like, Ever since elementary, yeah. I always was getting good grades. So education came natural. And a lot of times when things come natural and easy, we want to continue to do that. So that was something that, that. I'm, I'm aware of now that it always kind of came natural to me. And I never really pushed my boundaries. But with be, being an entrepreneur, you, you're forced to go beyond your comfort zone. And there's Absolutely. a lot of uncertainty. With the path of going on to college, I did have a plan. So to answer your question specifically, yeah. I had a plan even prior to applying to the different master programs, getting all the necessary paperwork uh, and all the recommendations, all the things that entails of the process of getting into the school. I did right. research prior to that to see what the requirements were, to see what type of jobs were going to be available in the future. So it was very um very but intentional calculated. yeah very intentional about what i wanted to do with the degree and and like you said life life happens and when you're thrown a curveball 
how you're gonna how you respond is more importantly the the piece where people can make a shift towards what is in alignment with you right right because you can get stuck and we all are going to be faced with challenges obstacles things that are going to cause us to question like everything right <laughs> and yeah. and i hit that moment but what was something that i have built and i have the ability to do is be able to look at every emotion every opportunity every experience every person that i've interacted with as an opportunity to learn and grow mm. and that was something that i took with me and i continue to do because we're all on different paths we're all on different journeys and through that i i truly believe that it's an infinite journey right there's no end game there's no need to like focus on like a result and that was something that is very, very ingrained into the educational system is a result driven, right? Get the degree and you have to have mm -hmm. certain degrees that have certain professions. And with my profession, I needed to have the degree in order to practice. To do so it. there has to be there. There was that need to like want to obtain this. And what happens is that can actually increase your anxiety level because you're constantly thinking like, what if I don't graduate or what if I fail this mm. test? So every time that you're faced with the obstacle along that path, even though it's here's an end goal, you know where you're going, you still have to kind of navigate right. through I that. And there was many yeah. times where I had to navigate. And there was many times that I just wanted to give up. Like there was days like, do I even really want to continue to pursue this? Is this even worth it? Like, right. am I even smart enough to do this? Am I, am I, yeah. uh, that all these things, all these doubts are going to surface. So, regardless so let me ask you this. So you're studying psychology, masters in psychologies, and you're learning about the mind, how you think, why people think the way they think, like all of these things. So I'm, I'm really curious when you're studying psychology on such a deep level and those thoughts pop up into your mind. Like, how, how did you process that with the, the such deep level of training that like you've been preparing for, okay, well, when people have this, or they think this way, this is what's going on in their psychology. But if they can shift that, like you're, you're doing all these things. And so when it happened in your life, how did, how did you kind of use the things you'd been learning to help you get through that? No, no. And that, that's another great question. So for me, something that always has been very beneficial is writing down my thoughts using all five of my senses hmm. and doing this every single day and really being able to be aware of your thoughts. So that way you can convey them onto paper or even, even on a phone allows you to clear your mind because once your mind is open, then your heart is open. So, as I was studying could, in could you explain school, that for a second? How do, how, do you, how do you write things down with all five of your senses? So when you do write them <laughs> I, down, I, that's yeah, a good explain question. This. <laughs> so when you do write them down, it's important that you use your taste, your sight, your ability to hear. So very descriptively, like for example, like if you're writing down what you want to do during that day, you write down like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to hear the music in the background playing as yeah. the sweat is beating down my face and I'm going to crush the workout. So now it's like you're training your mind Whoa. to delve even deeper, but you already are visualizing it. You're putting it down on paper. And then when you put it on paper, it becomes real. Thanks. So you're writing real. it down and you're going like, these are the things I'm going to smell. These are the things I'm going to feel. This is the way that I'm going to see things. So I, I'm just even thinking of this because I do, I do um, like meditation every single day and I write down things I'm grateful for and things I want to create in my life. And I'm just thinking of like by adding like, cause I don't, I don't add the, like the smells, the, <laughs> touches, but I'm just thinking like, if I add that, I, I can only imagine that it like it really does take it to another level because you're activating so many different parts of of 
of your mind, of your psychology. That's no, hundred percent. I love that. No, hundred percent. Okay. So you write down all five of your senses. And so what I would be curious then is you kind of mentioned it, that you're doing a psychology major. You have this tactical plan feels like something's kind of missing. Right. And I think for many people that are probably listening to this right now, I think many people can relate to, yeah, maybe we've all had that feeling one time or another in our life where we go, I feel like something's missing. So mm. I'm curious for you, when did that feeling turn into like a, I'm, I'm doing this. And I know you kind of touched on it was with dollar shave club, but like so many times I think we go throughout our life and something happens or we hear a friend say something and we're like, you know what? I'm, I'm really going to act on this feeling. And so many times we don't actually act on it. So what like really gave you the push to say, you know, I got this feeling, something's missing. I know I want to do something entrepreneurial to like, I'm taking a bold step in my life to make this happen. Because I think you and I both know that if we don't make a bold declaration for what we want our life to be, no one's going to come to you and go, Oh Matt, here's this piece of paper. I did everything you want. Just grab this. And it's all there. It's like, you got to make a bold decision. And so what, what did that process look like for you? No, that, that's another great question. So that process really started with my perception of the world. And when I was married, we were traveling. I, I was able to visit like Barcelona. We went to a wedding in Con. Like I was getting exposure by traveling to seeing the world from a different lens. Yeah. And then um, her, her father is a very well-known um, cosmetic surgeon. And he has a certain type of lifestyle. So being exposed to the different restaurants we would go to or being around him in general allowed me to open up my mind about other ways to expand as a person, yeah, right? Totally. And before I went to graduate school, I had a narrow lens of what that looks like. And it's, it's not always contingent upon like how much money you make or what fame you're going to accumulate <laughs> yeah. from accolades. It's not really about that, but there is a certain level of lifestyle. And it was the lifestyle that I was drawn to that really drove me to look at, okay, what are ways I can get to that lifestyle? And I learned that I wanted to continuously grow and move towards that. And as, as I was like practicing and, and I was, um, I had a family and, and life was happening, yeah. There was a point where I lost not the interest, but I lost my identity, like who I was. And I, for, I neglected that I needed to take care of myself. And there was a point where I was staring in a mirror. This was like 2018. There was a lot of stressors going on. And yeah. I was just looking in the mirror. I was like, I have to do something to make a change. And that was the moment where hmm. I just started working out at home. And this was like 2018 in the beginning. And I started going to the gym. I started eating healthier. I changed my okay. diet to vegan. I started working out consistently. I went back to my habit of writing down my thoughts because yeah. I was doing that like in, in more so like in high school and college. So I went back to doing that and I, I created it, it, it to a point where it became my identity. So not just something like as a routine or something that yeah. I just do, but it became my identity yeah. and it became a part of like my morning routine and things like that. And I started to make shifts in my life. And then I started applying that to some of my clients. I noticed that they were making shifts and that kind of, that's what kind of led to me wanting to build something that is scalable, that something that everybody can use through mindful journaling, because I know the power of it right? and mindful exercises, things like that. So that's what kind of led me to want to build the app. So, yeah. I, I, so, I, so fill us in. Yeah. So I know you obviously you have boom journal and that really is taken off now. And so fill us in on like, you, you're doing this practices every day, you're writing things down and it seems like something clicks at some point where you're like, 
this, this can make an impact in the world. Um, so walk us through how did, how did you go from, you know, where you're at to all of a sudden creating boom journal and everything you're doing with that. Yeah, absolutely. It really originated from thinking about how can I create something that everybody can utilize? Cause I know that there is a big push for like meditation. Meditation is yeah. something that I, I believe is very powerful. It's a great way to build that mental wellness of your, your, and I really look at it from that standpoint is like, you're building this, this mental wealth bank or this mental yeah. wellness that you kind of fill up. And I never been um, really strong on the word mental health because I felt like there was always this notion that you need to fix that person because they have something wrong with them. Mm -hmm. My outlook, even when I was in school, which they really push from the, you need to help this person. My, my push is I want to help, but I want to build based on what they, their strengths are, or just look at it from a way, how can I create healthy living habits that allows me to build my mental wellness? So that's something that I wanted right. to do as well is kind of shift that stigma of mental health and really make it something that's enjoyable, that's fun, that's engaging. And with mindful journaling, it's very simple. It's very simple to do, but the more you do it, the more you're building your ability to overpower the emotions, the unhealthy emotions. So mm -hmm. note that I'm not saying negative emotions, but they're unhealthy emotions that come up and it allows you to replace it with healthy emotions, not positive emotions, but healthy emotions of joy, inner peace, love, because that is in us already. It's up to us to train our mind to, to, to yeah. draw within us. And that's, that's kind of like, that's my mission. I just want to inspire people, energize them so they can live joyfully and healthy. What would you say is a way that like, let's say someone's listening to this and, you know, they've so like words have power undoubtedly. And, you know, someone's going, I got this negative, you know, thing that's in my life or this negative emotion or this negative place I go to. I love instantly the reframe that you've created there where it's not negative. It's just unhealthy because that's a little bit easier to think about. It's like, well, if I have a, you know, candy bar, that may be unhealthy, but it's not going to kill me. Right. And, and right. I can choose to not have the candy bar, I can choose to switch it out for an apple and have something more healthy. So I would be curious, like, what would you say is a way that if someone is having these negative thoughts or emotions or whatever we want to call them that we're now reframing into unhealthy, what's a way that they can start to reframe those into healthier ones? And it, it really starts with ways that you can start to take care of yourself, right? So mm -hmm. it can be as simple as just getting out in nature. Like if you just go to the park and it doesn't have to be a long period of time, but any, any way that you can bring your awareness to the present. And when you're, when you're there, it's really being able to be grateful for what you currently have. Right. Because we're, Absolutely. we're going to be bombarded with, with many, many unhealthy thoughts throughout the day, but it's okay to sit with them. It's okay to have unhealthy thoughts. A lot of times what we do is we, we want to like put the bandaid on it like, and, or take that time on to get rid of that unhealthy emotion that's coming up. So we tend to, not always, but we tend right. to want to distract ourselves with hmm. instant gratification, whether it's something that's pleasurable or something that we really enjoy doing. And we're not really addressing that emotion. And it's really about being able to sit with that emotion. Because once you know, when you really know that you are stronger than any emotion that comes up, mm. then now you take back control. And that, that's the goal. So for me, and it may be different for, for other people, like some people that use meditation to kind of just allow your, your, your mind to face the day and get ready for the emotions that are going to come up. But it's, it's really being able to clear that your mind. And for me, it's writing it down, writing it down is so powerful for me. And, and I yeah. always follow it up with some type of movement, 
like moving my body. Hmm. So it's something that I am aware of and I've trained to really be able to combat those strong, unhealthy emotions. And I always remind myself that those emotions are okay. Because sometimes those emotions are used to push you towards what it is you want. Yeah, for real. So, like fuel. Exactly. So it doesn't matter if it's an unhealthy or if it's a healthy one. It's up to you to decide what you're going to do when you are feeling those strong emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love the way that you incorporate movement into it too. Like I'm, I'm a big studier of Tony Robbins. I work with him right now. And one of the things that he talks about is like motion creates emotion. And it's like, you know, we think about in our life, if you're sad or you're depressed or whatever it is, like most likely you're probably not having a lot of motion in your life. Like maybe you're sitting on a couch, you're curled up in a ball, your shoulders are slouched, you're breathing slowly. It's like, you don't have a lot of motion, but then we can all think of that experience where we're singing in a car. And from my experience, not well, right? But I'm singing, I'm belting. <laughs> and even though I'm not good, I still do it because it creates motion. And then when you have motion in your life, you have emotion. Like I have um, a little trampoline in my house. And whenever I'm, you know, not in an energy rich state, I go jump on the trampoline for like a minute. And just having that motion like gets the emotion back in a positive place. And so I love how you incorporate the writing and then also move your body. I think just incorporating both of those is, is an incredible way to kind of get you to where you want to be, go from unhealthy to healthy. And so um, I guess I would be curious, Matt. I mean, if people want to get more info on you and see what you're up to, I know you're doing a lot. Where's the best place for them to find you, see what you're up to um, and kind of just check a little bit more about you and everything you're up to. No, absolutely. Yeah. The best way to discover me is on Instagram. I'm, I'm usually on there every day. I am Matt West uh, is my Instagram handle. And then at my, uh, my website is I am Matt West.com. Boom. All right. And we'll put all that in the show notes too. So people, you can go there and grab those. And one last question I have for you, and I have an idea of where we might go with this, but, um, I still, I still want to get your answer is, every guest we ask one question and it's the same question because here we want to help people find direction, but we believe through doing it through action, whether that's action in our mind, whether that's action with our body, whether that's taking actions in our lives. Um, but we have to actively do something in order to create the life that we want in, in whatever way, shape that form looks like. And so I would be curious for you, what would you say is one thing someone listening to this can do in the next 24 to 48 hours to start finding direction in their life? No, that, that's a, that's a really, really great question. And I know that it's synonymous with finding your purpose and things like that. But what I would share is, yeah. and I would challenge people to ask yourself, what is that one thing that you would get excited, you get energized, to wake up and do and really start to think about that and be mindful of why it's making you feel that way, right? Be mindful of why, and then you can look at what you can do and just start taking small actionable steps every single day towards that. Love and that. It will, it'll, just, it'll just flow and it'll be natural. And you'll discover it without even realizing it because you'll become it. You'll, you'll be your identity. It'll be something that you share with others and you get excited about doing it every single day. Yeah, I love that. Phenomenal, man. Well, Matt, um, one more time, man. I just want to say thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for sharing your life and, and all your experiences, man. I know it's going to bring a lot of value to people. So thank you so much for being here and really appreciate you, my man. No, my pleasure. I appreciate you and you have a great weekend. Thank you, man. You too.